News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo and broadcasting live on TV One and live on Facebook. And a little bit later on, you can catch the clip on YouTube. In the meantime, it's all about elections, elections and elections. And it's all about corruption, corruption, corruption. But let's talk about the elections. And uh, joining us this morning is Mr. Manjula Gajanaika, um, the National Coordinator for the Center for Monitoring Election Violence, CMEV. And a uh, very good morning to you, Mr. Gajanaika. Good morning to you. And nice to have you on uh, Newsline, your familiar face on our network. We've uh, seen you on Face the Nation. Yeah which broadcasts on Monday nights at 9.30. Um, now then, the fact that you're on our program and you get invited to attend these programs, does this mean that there is a real possibility of election violence? Uh, actually, I should say that uh, comparing with the past elections, mm. we are facing a very, uh, not very actually, comparatively peaceful elections right. in this time. Uh, but in time to time we are receiving some reports from the field. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have received uh, more than 400 uh, elect, uh, violence incidents. But uh, most of them are uh, minim, uh, not major violence actually. Right. But out of 400 uh, there are more than uh, 35 incidents are major. Right. But. Uh, out of those uh, 400, uh, more than f over 400 incidents, mm. uh, we can say that uh, there's a bit of increasement of violence against women yeah. uh, in this season because after the after the submission of nominations, we have received more than 28 election violence, violence against women in elections. It's 28 just purely against women. Women. Mm. So we can see that it is not organized violence against women, but in, in some kind of that, some parts, especially in Northern, we have received three uh, serious incidents. And uh, in the same time, last uh, uh, day before yesterday also, we received that uh, one of candidate has threatened twice a uh, female candidate and also there's a widespread rumor that is spreading rumors that don't uh, cast your vote for women. Such yeah. kind of things happening in the area. <clears throat> um, in the north, and well, maybe countrywide. Tell me first about these 28 cases. Is that localized? Is it uh, spread, or is it the figure for the entire country? Or? In uh, entire country, but the thing is, actually, it is, this is this is only reported. 28 incidents. Ah, reported this is, to whom? The police this is or a, you? Reported, to, reported to CMEV, right. especially, but in the same time we have reported, we have complained to uh, uh, election commission, in the same time uh, IGP. Right. But the thing is, out of those 28, there's a very, very serious incident that one of cleric, uh, in uh, one of uh, cleric uh, Putlam district, right. uh, uh, uploaded a video Actually, he has uploaded a second video also recently. Then there are two video on a hate speech, right. uh, hate speech against uh, women political participation. Well, this this is the priest is saying this. This cleric is saying yes. Cleric is saying that uh, don't don't cast uh, your vote for women. It is a uh, it is totally sin, and uh, he's underestimating women participation in elections. So what action can be taken against that cleric? Unfortunately, no action. We already actually, uh, we already complained to election commissions. Actually, election commissioner chairman actually personally called us and he's taken many actions, but he has directed it to IGP. But we, have, I, we are planning to ask again what has happened to that complaint, but uh, up to date, actually Sri Lanka police has not taken any actions against that uh, election, uh, that incident, because that cleric may be that uh, even after the complaint, first complaint, yeah. he has uploaded another video that uh, underestimating women participation. Is that, that, is that because, you know, there's a, if you look at the bigger picture, there's yeah. a complacency um, in terms of applying the law. I um, mean, for example, for if we look at the bond report, it's now a month, over a month, and uh, the progress has been 
you know, slower than watching paint dry, right? And that's the way we feel about it. Uh, and so many things, the, 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 the system seems to be slow. So perhaps your, um, this cleric who, in spite of the complaint, didn't give two hoots and he just put another one up. Uh, yes. It shows uh, a healthy disrespect for the law. Um, but then there is no law. So how, how, where, how do you stop someone? Yeah, honestly, I should say that in terms of election, election monitoring, in, in terms of security of elections and providing security for the elections, actu actually, IGP and uh, Sri Lanka police has uh, doing a commandable service in during these last three or four weeks, even mm -hmm. after the comparing with past elections, actually, they are they are doing a great service under the guidance of election commissions. But in this regards, in this case, actually, they have not taken any action. That is our worry. Now, uh, the last parliamentary elections and before that the presidential poll uh, and, and before that so many elections, are there any instances that you can tell me where a complaint has resulted in a prosecution and a conviction for violence related to elections? Unfortunately, it is very low. You know that, uh, that's why, yes. What's low mean? How, mean, how low mean is low? No, I mean actually we uh, we can't see any uh, progress in uh, during last past la last uh, the, two the, decades. The, are you aware of any incident where there's been a complaint where action has been taken? It is two. The it is it is two categories. Two categories. One thing is that if there is any major incidents, actually police and election election, election department at that time taking actions on the spot. Mm. But I mean that if there is any violence, actually they can stop at the spot. But in the meantime, our real worry is, you may, you, you, I know you are really aware on this fact that uh, last election, last three, last two or three elections, mm. there was a massive corruptions and uh, gov previous government used uh, public property heavily. Mm -hmm. Then, soon after this government uh, came now, to I'm power... Being, I'm using public property in this government as well. Yeah, that's why actually we just... Where, where does one draw the line? Uh, uh, let's say some minister goes off to, I don't know, very far place from here, uh, and then uh, he's using um, state property to get there and so on. Uh, but then, do you know, how, how do you, how does one make the differentiation? No, differentiation is like, like this actually. Do, then now, at least in this time, actually, we can see some best practices. You know that when when president and uh, other ministers are using uh, state vehicles and uh, actually helicopters, mm. they, if they need uh, some vehicles and other things, actually, that local government commissioners are asking deposit money before release vehicles. At least now, president uh, presidential secretary. So should in that same line, uh, Mr. Gajanaka, should should the air force? or the operators of these uh, helicopters, for yeah. example, yeah. should they be sending a bill for the time that it's used to the secretaries or the treasuries of, <coughs> of whichever pa party it is? So in the case of uh, the prime minister, it's his party and the, pres the president and any other ministers, it's whoever, whichever party they belong to. Is that, is that a good idea? Can it be done? Yes, because you know last time actually that the previous government has used uh, the helicopters and public property heavily. In this last time act we complained actually we did receive nothing. Mm -hmm. But in this time actually under the RTI we already submitted uh, application to uh, Air Force the, that uh, Prime Minister and uh, president, president is using. Presidents are using the helicopters and government vehicles. Basically helicopters actually we have requested give details from Air Force that we believe that they are deposit money. They have already deposit money to the Air Force, yeah. but uh, we already already uh, applied. Uh, we we already applied uh, R under, under the RTI law mm -hmm. uh, applications. Uh, we are waiting for the results. Um, <clears throat> so let, let, you can only go by sort of uh, historical data. So what is the, uh, in the last uh, elections, how much of violence was there? 
last elections is the very very sorry situation you know that 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 election conducted under three levels in the country 2011 mm. that und conducted under three levels uh, 2011 tw yeah 2011 that local government elections actually they oh, are you're talking about the last uh, okay that the, that these uh, local authorities elections i uh, know I, I was trying to talk about the last uh, parliamentary polls in 2015. And even we can add uh, presidential election yes, also yeah. that uh, 2015. What was, what was the level of violence there? The, the difference is actually that uh, January 8th, the presidential election, it is the, it is the main election which held in the country mm. the public uh, heavily used uh, public property in ever in the country. You know that in that time, actually, the previous government used many uh, public property, that helicopters yes, so, and, so in that, and everything. So what was the level of violence then? That, that we have received that during presidential election, we have received uh, more than uh, 600 complaints and also assault, intimidation, threat, and many, many more uh, violence. In again, actually, 2015, uh, during uh, general election time, also it is same. But the last uh, latter part of the elections, actually, we did we, we the, that it was uh, peaceful elections. But uh, at the end of the elections, actually, we have received more than 400 uh, violence uh, incidents. Mm. Out of 400, uh, there were 120 major election violence in yeah. the country. But then, comparatively, that's why we are saying that comparatively, this election is uh, peaceful. Uh, <clears throat> Now then, uh, as you know, uh, we invite our viewers to send in their questions, and that's uh, by SMS or by WhatsApp, uh, 0772 300 uh, One of the questions we've received now is um, to ask you whether the so-called developed countries have an organization for monitoring election violence. Um, <clears throat> do they? In other countries, do they have? Yes, yes. Actually, you know that election monitors are very acceptable in those countries, but in unfortunately, but Sri Lanka. Do, do, do we, do, would they have them in the U.S. or in in Britain or in Germany, in New Zealand? Have on. Have? Actually, they are doing election monitoring, and not only that, that the election polling and other stuff also. Actually, they are giving a Is higher priority. Higher priority, yeah. but in India actually they are not accepted uh, accept uh, international monitors into the country. Right. But in Sri Lanka they accept uh, inter even international monitors, uh, especially Commonwealth monitors into the country. But unfortunately the the, the situation is here yeah. that 2004 when Mr. Dayananda Dizanaik was the commissioner of uh, commissioner of election department yeah. granted official accreditation to Paferal Land Center for Monterey Election Violence CMEV accreditation to put uh, uh, static observers in any so your, polling stations your, in the country. Yeah, so your, the very fact that you all are present, that your organization is present in the country, is that proof indeed that uh, the violence is likely to happen and that's why you all are there to try and be a sort of a, a middle force there? Yes, violence can be happened that the face of the violence is different. You know that the uh, in earlier time actually we saw that threat and intimidation, assault and many more things. Mm. But in this, the, the recently the, the trend is not such kind of violence taking place. The, not physical? Not physical actually mind operation is there mental operation like like, like that uh, sending uh, spreading that uh, rumors and uh, uploading that vi viral uh, video clips yeah. against uh, using hate speech mm. such kind of things also secret in secret manner using using public property misuse of public property mm -hmm. and also another big question is that you may know that there's no any law related to uh, limitation of campaign finance in the I country. I was about to ask you, what about campaign finance? Actually, campaign finance is in other countries, in India and other, even even uh, even uh, UK and America, all countries actually, they have forced law, they have introduced law. Limitation of campaign finance, can basically, mm. during election time, any politician can spend large amount of money for the campaign during the campaign right but that accordingly in bangla even bangladesh actually actually they have a ceiling 
yeah. seal in mean actually they have introduced that that much of money only can be spent during election time. That's limit on the party or the individual? Both sides actually. Even candidate -wide level and, uh, and po political party level actually they have limited. But in Sri Lanka, you know that before 1977 there was a law. Mm. Even, even that, the, that uh, some of parliamentary, pa parliamentarian lost their seats. Even la even, uh, there is a law, isn't it, where all candidates must declare uh, their um, asset and, their asset and, asset and declaration. declaration. Even the, the losers. Yeah. All yeah. candidates. Only the, the thing is, only submissions. They are not uh, by obliged to reveal those facts. But so the what's thing the is, point? Why can't the public know? Why, if I want to find out, uh, or if you want to find out the details of uh, the assets and declarations of any British parliamentarian, yes. for example, yes. you just go online and you look. And uh, there are some organizations in, in Britain where, you know, if the, in a council, let's say, and if you're having a meeting uh, with a contractor, you need to declare that and yes. you have to put it on your website yes. before uh, that meeting. And then after the meeting, declare how much is spent yeah. and so on. Yeah. So uh, how come we don't have is, will we ever have that level of transparency yet? No, not at all. You know that this is very, very outdated law which, is, which was introduced in 1975, Asset and Liabilities Act. But the thing is actually, the parliamentary have not taken any steps to introduce, I mean, actually any steps to amend this law. Yeah. That's the reason. You know that already, as, as I know, that the Mr. Asok Abhisek, Executive Director of Transparency International, already obtained mm. half of ministers, half of members, parliamentarians, asset and declarations. But what it is, he, can't, it, he can't publish? Yes, it is inside his drawer. Actually, he, yeah. he, he, he will not be able to uh, really uh, reveal those he facts. He can't even tell his wife. Yes. Yes. He Otherwise, he he would he would he will get to the jail. Yes. The really? we, actually even we are <coughs> if we are paying seven hundred and fifty rupees, we can obtain an asset and declaration. But as you said, actually we can't show it even to our even even to the wife. That's the fact. Then other thing is you know that the punishment and of, uh, the the punishment uh, and other things also. They actually we should update it. That right. this outdated law. That if if. If any parliamentarian not reveal that, that what will be the what what would be the fine? Actually, yeah. only one thousand rupees. That is the thing. But if we have revealed it to others, now, okay, now it's, it's a thousand rupees. Does that exclude you there, thereafter from sitting in parliament? Once you get fined a thousand rupees, yeah, for not supplying your uh, declaration. Declarations, yeah. Can you then? Are you excluded from parliament? No, not no. at all. Not you at just all. pay a thousand rupees yes. and carry on? Uh, yes, yes. Already did they actually. That last time actually two parliamentarians find a uh, 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 court, but, but nothing happened in two times. But Mr. Sajid Waskin Wadna had to pay a Yeah, but rupees. unfortunately he's not in the parliament now. But yeah. after only that... So uh, now that fine. he's had... I don't know whether he's paid it. Perhaps he started a fund to, uh, to collect the money. But um, once he pays it, does he, is he, can he contest again? Yes, yes, because there's a, there's a, there's a qualification, the qualification level actually, if not jailed uh, beyond two years, actually uh, convicted, then they, he can contest again. But the thing is, the bigger picture, the, in this time also, according to the new, new election, election system, we, we, time to time, we reveal that. Have you read all these reports? Which report? These uh, assets and liabilities. No, no, no. Actually, I have read uh, very few asset and declaration reports. Lachman Kirialis. Have you ever read his? No, I wish to read because he he he, he mentioned that last time that uh, he has uh, such amount of 400 money. Four hundred million. Four hundred million like that. But Thirty thousand. Yeah. Acres. If so, if he has any honest honest idea, actually, it is up to him reveal those uh, those uh, asset and declarations before the gen before general public it is not a hidden thing as he mentioned in the parliament and other general uh, and uh, outside of the parliament that uh, other thing is the bigger picture mr farah that the, in this election system yeah. that uh, most of candidates are using 
my large amount of money even mm. last uh, last week we last week we received a complaint yeah uh, on uh, one of candidates contesting monaragala district for a small pradeshya sabha he has spent already he has spent 20 million rupees he has given more than 50 electricity new electricity connections to villagers when you say he has given does that mean he has paid for those connections he has paid through his supporters he has paid for new connections and actually luckily i obtained all bills and not only that he has paid for a uh, water board for new uh, water uh, for new connections not only that he has paid all uh, electricity and uh, electricity and water bills of uh, one know, more you, than you, 100 you, families yes but the point is you're telling me this and i'm thinking to myself I'm, f I'm feeling sorry for those people who who didn't have electricity or water because they because the economy is so bad that they didn't have their monies and they've had to compromise their independence by accepting these things from politicians so on the one side I'm feeling sorry for the recipients uh, and on the other I, I take on board your point that this is all very bad yes the, the, at least what what we are trying to do this actually that, that, that when we see when we see these kind of incidents happening around the elections which it, it is very dangerous because you know that the new electron election system introduced in same time actually it would be better if we were able to introduce a new election new law uh, on uh, limitation of campaign finance as I, as we know that already there were there are two draft as March 12 moment, a Pefrel and CA may be drafted one law on uh, campaign finance, mm. already uh, submitted to the president. Yeah. And in same time, election commission, as we know, they drafted uh, consultation with other stakeholders, one, uh, one uh, campaign finance draft. They also uh, submitted to the president. President also, I think, uh, president also submitted a memorandum, uh, uh, some kind of uh, document to the cabinet to regenerate uh, the introduce a new uh, campaign finance law mm -hmm. uh, no no you know sometimes uh, or most times uh, the law is selectively applied and a case in point was in that in the uh, the 2011 period uh, parliamentary period uh, mr sajwaskunawat was as you know and we just mentioned fined for not supplying his um, as a declaration, yes. thousand rupees, and so on. Yes. Now, if I remember rightly, during that time, of the two, uh, 225 members of parliament, only 44 had supplied their assets and True. declarations. So True. 181, and so on, True. did not. And out of those, only one person has been uh, has been fined and gone through the through the mill. Why is the law being applied um, so selectively? The, the thing is that I, I should say the first, first I should say that mm, even that submission of asset and declaration is useless. Yeah. Because what will happen then? Then actually it is they are put in the presidential secretariat or that election commission or any other person actually what they are doing. Why is there a difference? Why some to the elections uh, secretariat and why some to the parliament? That is confused of law. That's why we should introduce the new law to the country. You know that all, all uh, candidates for candidates of local authorities should submit uh, their, their asset and declaration to the election commission. But in same time, once they elected actually, they should, uh, they should uh, submit they are set and declaration to the minister, secretary of ministry of provincial council and local government again members should be submitted their application to the honorable speaker of the parliament and ministers to the presidential uh, secretary of the president mm. but it is the, the, the that we can't understand from whom we should ask this asset and declaration that at, we, if, when we are concerned on this matter actually we have to there should be a proper mechanism Mm. Uh, at the uh, first of all, yeah. but in same time, as you ask that, yes, it is not only the election stuff, not only asset and declaration. It is always selective. That is our worry, actually. That's why we told that at least, it when it comes to elections, 
there should be a separate court or separate something like uh, electoral judiciary related to electoral matters this yahapalan government soon after came uh, they soon after they came to the power in uh, 2015 actually they promised to they promised to set up a separate commission to look matters happened in dune in last uh, last uh, 5 or 10 years mm. but actually they the the honorable speaker at that time actually he was the minister of uh, minister of administration he convened a meeting to stay, set up a commission but they, that but they did nothing that's the thing at least i mean my suggestion is that related to elections at least there should be a, uh, there should be a proper another mechanism related to electoral so how do stuff. you monitor this do you have you got a a team an army of people who are located in various centers uh, what what's the practical side of it yes our our monitoring mechanism is actually that already we have deployed uh, 25 district coordinators they are working for one and a half months uh, for center uh, cmav in same mm. time we have deployed field coordinators polling division level right then there are 160 there were 160 field coordinators last elections but due to funds and other restraints, actually, we have deployed only 60 polling uh, stations. And where level. do your funds come from? We, we, we receive funds from uh, foreign countries, uh, especially embassies, uh, USAID, and uh, German, and uh, United States, and such kind, those countries, where few countries. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, all, these, all your monitors are in place? Yes, right. well placed. And the public, are, how, how deep is your penetration, the awareness level? Awareness level, actually, we do our, best, our level best to aware of them. But unfortunately, still, uh, still uh, that uh, citizens are not aware properly on this mechanism. But, but comparatively, comparing the last election cycle, we are receiving more uh, election related complaints mm. uh, in same time same time election commission also as we know that they are receiving many many complaints mm -hmm. but but unfortunately you know that in periphery areas people as you mentioned earlier we are sorry about them actually that in Martali district that mm. already as I know one of uh, one of uh, deputy minister already already organized 15 pilgrimage out of the district actually then such kind of things are happening everywhere uh, but people, people are using what, what we are saying actually. When someone giving something, yeah. please take it. But in same time, we t please inform us because it is. I don't know whether it is unethical or unethical. Mm -hmm. But you know that in periphery areas, actually, some receiving something also important to them. Right. Um, and do you feel how? Um, because people. This is a subject that people do talk about, uh, and that is rigging elections. Is that, is that actually possible? Is that sort of thing happening? Violence. No, rigging, the false voting, voting uh, oh, yeah, forcing yeah. people to... No, I don't think, I don't think, because you, don't, you, you know that this time the election system, election system is totally different, that uh, the new features are there. That Last and final question for you, because it's from a viewer. How much funding do you receive per year? It is. It, it depends on the not year actually. It depends on the events. Ah. Actually, in this time for these elections, uh, we have already already we have re received only one million rupees. But from, from whom? On uh, that uh, United States, mm -hmm. then only one million rupees. We will receive another maybe two or three million. Rupees for entire elections, from but we who? know from it, in same time actually that uh, Swiss embassy, Swiss embassy, we will receive uh, maybe 1.5 million for this uh, election, entire election monitoring. But the thing is, you know, it is uh, in this time since uh, lack of funds, uh, we have organized our electoral election monitoring mission mm -hmm. entirely volunteer basis. I see. Yeah. That's why actually that last time actually we spent more much much funds and we got result because we were able to at least minimize corruptions and uh, violence in the, at la the last time. Manjula Gajanaika, thank you so much for being on Newsline and explaining uh, this uh, 
other and uh, valuable aspect to the forthcoming elections and all the elections. Um, keep up the work and uh, do let us know uh, how we can help because we are always here to serve the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's the way it was on uh, Thursday, the 1st of February 2018 on Newsline. Take care and God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.